Hi, John McElroy here talking all things automotive. Have you ever wondered why most of the world drives on the right hand side of the road while other countries drive on the left? It's something that's puzzled automotive historians for a long, long time. And while no one has the definitive answer as to why this is so, let's dive into the different theories that historians have come up with. First off, we have to look at the countries that drive on the left hand side of the road and have the steering wheel on the right. It was the British that established that standard. Even today, the British Isles and most of the former British Empire drive on the left-hand side of the road, including Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, India, and a number of Caribbean islands. But it wasn't just the British. Japan also went that way, because over a century ago, Japan copied almost everything that the British did. As an island monarchy, it felt a great kinship with England. But it wasn't just countries that admired England. Sweden was another country that drove on the left. In fact, the Swedes drove on the left-hand side of the road up until September 3, 1967. And at 4.40 a.m. that morning, they had to switch from the left side of the road to the right side. It was a logistical nightmare and very unpopular, but they did it. The most recent country to change was the island nation of Samoa. It made the switch as recently as 2009, but it went in the opposite direction, going from the right-hand side of the road to the left. And that's because Samoa is close to Australia and New Zealand, and it wanted to import cheap used cars from them that would be more affordable for its people. But why did the British ever end up on the left-hand side of the road in the first place? Historians say it goes back to the days of knights in shining armor who were mounted on mighty steeds. Supposedly, when knights would encounter each other on the road, they never knew if the other chap was a friend or foe. So they wanted to keep their fighting arm free and ready in case they had to fight. And since most people are right-handed, they kept their horses to the left side of the road so their right side was closest to any potential enemy. And maybe that's true, but why did the rest of the world end up on the right-hand side of the road? Again, historians say it's because most people are right-handed. When you go back to the days of when carts and wagons were hauled by oxen or horses, the drivers would walk alongside them with a whip to keep the animals moving. And since most people are right-handed, they walked on the left side of the animals, and that meant their wagons were on the right-hand side of the road. In the United States, according to the Department of Transportation, the first law mandating the use of the right-hand side of the road was established in 1792 on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. In 1804, New York became the first state to mandate right-hand travel on all public highways, and by the Civil War in the mid-1800s, every state was doing it. And then later, when the horseless carriages first started showing up, over 120 years ago, they kept to the right-hand side of the road. But the drivers also sat on the right-hand side of the car. Take a look at any early cars. Pre-1908, they almost all have the steering wheel on the right-hand side of the car, even in countries that drove on the right-hand side. Many historians say that's because those early cars had rudimentary controls that were located outside of the car, like the handbrake. The curved dash Oldsmobile even had the engine crank on the right-hand side that you could reach from the driver's seat. And they were located on the right because, once again, most people are right-handed. But when Henry Ford came out with the Model T in 1908, it had the steering wheel on the left side of the car. Ford was able to package all the controls inside the car, and that allowed him to put the steering wheel on the left side. It was also safer since drivers could more easily judge the gap between them and oncoming traffic. And since the Model T became so popular and sold in such big numbers, virtually every other automaker had to follow suit. Like I said at the beginning, nobody knows for sure why some countries drive on the left side of the road, while most others drive on the right, and there's other theories out there too. But the knights in shining armor and the people with whips walking next to ox carts are the best explanations that I've heard from automotive historians. And I wanted to share that with you because most people have never given a second thought as to why they ended up on one side of the road instead of the other.